Greetings, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Octopath Traveler. I am your host, Alden Fudry, and you might notice that we're in a little bit different of a place than we were when we started. I did a not insignificant amount of grinding after the end of Hanet's Chapter 2, and <laughs> we managed to... Hi, kitty, what do you want? <laughs> Mochi, no, you cannot get up here. <laughs> the, as you can see, I've got a fair number of levels added on, because we were about 27 to 29-ish on most of the other party members at the end of Hanet's Chapter 2. As you can see, Therion has made a bit of a jump going all the way to 45, whereas most of my other party members are now in the 33 to 35 range. Actually, it might even be 34 to 35. <sighs> Excuse me. Let's do a quick check. Yeah, it's 34 and 35 across the board except for Therion and his uh, overpowered butt. But, on the bright side, that makes going to the Chapter 3s a lot more bearable now. Once I start doing some of these Chapter 3s, we actually might make our way to doing our first um, secret job. Another thing you might notice, going to the world map. Oops, wrong button. Is... Uh, yeah, you'll notice that a decent chunk of the map has been unlocked. During my grinding, I started making my way into the final tier um, areas. So, like, West Grandport Coast, the Riverford Traverse, <laughs> and whatnot. So, I was going there to... Basically, like, see what I could do as far as, like, grinding against the monsters in these danger level 45 areas. And, admittedly, my equipment must be better than I thought because I actually did a fairly decent job of dealing with level 45 monsters. I had a few hiccups. Because obviously there's going to be some hiccups associated with that. But I was using the final tier towns like Orwell, Riverford, and Duskbarrow as kind of uh, resting points during the grinding montage. I also managed to find a few capes while I was out running around. And uh, quite frankly... That helped a bit with the grinding, because each, I think I maybe ran into three, maybe four Kates over the grinding montage, and each one gave the party members involved, outside of Therion, at least two levels per Kate. So it was not a bad thing. Another thing that I managed to do in these towns is I managed to use Therion's steel path action to get a decent amount of items. Now I know I said last time that we were gonna try to go through some of the uh, outside little optional dungeons. So stuff like the Whistling Cavern, uh, the Untouched Sanctum, there's, a, there's quite a few. I went into some of them, like Captain's Bane was another area that I did some leveling up in. And admittedly, like, while useful, there's not really a whole lot to see in these places. A few of them have boss battles, and the ones that I haven't gone into yet to do their boss battles, I probably will do those on screen at a later time. But right now, I'm kind of focused on basically hoarding JP for the party members. Because at the bare minimum, I do want to get uh, Ophelia to 5,000 before we do our 
first um, <laughs> secret job shrine because you actually face bosses at the end of those shrines and Alfred's auspices will be rather useful. I've already got a decent handle on most of the other stuff that I want because there is a way to cheese the first secret job shrine that we're going to do and to do that I'm going to probably be running a party of Therion, Primrose, Ophelia, and Tressa. And as odd as it may, actually, you know what? I might swap. So you know what? Yeah, I might swap Tressa for Alfin. Because Alfin will be able to use... Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, that would be better. So we're going to be running Therion, Alfin, Ophelia, and Primrose for our first secret job battle. Because Alfin, in this kind of situation, is actually a much more efficient BP battery than Tressa is. Because Tressa requires actual... Like, BP in order to be an efficient BP battery. Alfin? I just need the proper ingredients for his concoctability. And I can get those from shops. <laughs> like, no problem. But with that being said, we're going to see if we can go ahead and dive into our first Chapter 3. We're going to do Alfin's Chapter 3 to see what he has going on in the town of Saintsbridge. Let's see what we got going here. The story so far. The deadly disease that plagued Goldshore. In the end, it was but the trickery of Vanessa, a depraved quack who enriched herself at her patient's expense. But Alfin put an end to her villainy and healed the people out of the kindness of his heart. You are always my hero, an unreachable ideal. But heck if I ain't getting closer by the day. Having eased the pain and suffering of one town, Alfin strode into Saintsbridge with newfound confidence. Little did he know what awaited him there. That means something's gonna go wrong, isn't it? Uh, who's this guy? Miguel. Hmm. Oi. Hey. Can you spare a scrap of food for a poor soul? As you can see, the snicks left me too injured to stand. Hmm. Show it to me. Hmm. The wound festers. If it isn't treated, you'll be dead before the next sunrise. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. What? You're one of them apothecaries, is that it? What's it to you? Bloody hells, but the gods smile on me. Treat my wound, and you can name your price. Before that, answer me one thing. Hmm. Of course, ask me anything. Interesting. Afraid you're out of luck, friend. Uh. Your life isn't worth saving. Wait, wait, have some mercy. She can't just leave a man to die. Uh, apparently he can. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You're an apothecary, ain't you? How can you leave a man you examine to suffer? And who in the hells are you? Well, that was rude. Name's Alvin, and despite appearances, I'm a traveling apothecary myself. Fellow druggist, is it? Well, listen. I'm a free man with the right to choose my patients. What's that supposed to be? I mean, that's technically actually a fair point. It means just what I said. Some lives aren't worth saving. Uh... That's an interesting idea. 
What makes this guy's what life? What is this? What makes this guy's life not worth saving? You're an apothecary too, you said. Sure am, and one who doesn't discriminate when it comes to those in need. Let me see that book. If that guy thinks that he's not worth saving, Much obliged. why do I get the feeling this is gonna come back to bite us in the butt later? That should give you a fighting chance. But you ain't out of the woods yet. You'll need plenty of rest till it heals up. Here, lean on me. You're far too kind. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> the name's Alfred. Just doing my job. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Better for drinking if you catch my me. Hate to break it to you, but not in your condition. <laughs> no getting drunk now. Hi. My gut's telling me something bad's gonna happen. Uh, and we've already got some travel banter. Hmm. Why I never? Turns his back on the sick and suffering has no right to call himself an apothecary. Only more people could be like you. This is what I mean when I say there needs to be more doctors like Alfred. Not even merchants set a price when it comes to helping people in trouble. I feel like in this game, like Alfred and Tressa are like bestest buds. And I will die on that hill. Nothing like a flag to me to ease a man's care. I go for the rumors more than the drink. Who's wealthy, who's not, which lords pay their guards well, which don't. Mead loosens tongues and gets mad. Well, that's true. That's actually a good point. Thieves themselves often drop by to share secrets and tips. Huh. I best be careful next time I'm quenching my thirst. You could try. Wait, I'll be counting my mugs if you and I ever go drink. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. Holy crap! How many travel banters do we have here? You mustn't push yourself. Perhaps I could take care of Miguel in your stick. Hmm. Did he not have anyone to look after? Try to consume me more spirits. Uh, okay, I think we finally got through that. That's kind of funny that I ended up having all three party members in the party at that time to do all of those travel banters right off the bat. That's actually pretty nifty. And the funny thing is, I didn't even do that on purpose. Those were just like my two lowest level party members, Ophelia and Tressa. <laughs> so I was going to level them up first. Uh. What's this now? What's all the hubbub, bub? What the? Someone, help! Hmm? Let me take a look. What? Hmm. No food poison. Oh dear. No, no. 
Could be an allergy, Not perhaps. Oh. I'm coming in. Oh. You. Paroxysm. Oh, so it could be an allergy. Whoa. Okay, this guy apparently does know what he's doing. Oh. Oh. Oh, my. Just doing my job. Ogden or Ogan. Eh, I'm gonna go with Ogan. Learn to not trust a man before you know him. Uh I feel like there's a hidden meaning there. Alright. Okay, our next travel banter is going to be with Cyrus. Primrose after that. So let's see what we got. Come now. <laughs> Boy was saved, there's no small solace. I have had the honor of studying under many great thinkers. What precisely went through your mind when you realized the full extent of his skills? Now there's an answer if I ever heard one. I, I mean, that's actually very good. And one of the things I like most about Alfred is just, like, his passion for what he does. You don't see a lot of people with that kind of passion for their jobs. But when you do, it's definitely something to behold. If nothing else. Huh, what's this? Tidying oh. up the really... Huh. Hmm. I need help from a whippersnapper. Well, excuse me for trying to be helpful. I swear, a guy can't be try to be nice nowadays without being called a whippersnapper. Okay. Granny's in here. Yeah, here she is. Old woman to the southeast. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> well, at least we helped one person. Yeah, I'm probably going to just keep Tressa and uh, Ophelia once we get through the main part of the story. Just so I can level them up to be in line with everyone else. Because one of the things that I absolutely need for the secret jobs, especially the first two, is going to be this. Which, thankfully, I already have. Siltige's Seduction. For three turns, skills performed on a single ally will use, but usually target one will affect all foes instead. Hmm. Now see, that doesn't exactly affect just foes as well. It also affects 
skills that affect allies. What in the world? Hold on one second, I think I hear the cat at the door. Okay. Yep, the cat was definitely at the door. Oh boy. Old woman to the northwest. How are you holding up? Hmm. Thank you. Mm. What are you doing <laughs> over there, you weirdo? Hi. Time to go grape picking. Hmm? Have a good bottle of wine. Uh. Are you all right? Uh. How can this be? That rotten, no good thief. Wait. Uh. Hold up. Oh no. Mm. You know it's best for you to you find yourself a new friend. Mm. Oh boy. That's not good. So we meet again. Sorry, no time to chat. I have a patient waiting. Hmm. Sure. Uh, so you knew. I did. He claimed to be a humble farmer, but the dagger concealed beneath his cloak told me otherwise. There was far more blood on him than that from his wound. Oh. Nor did his nervous, flickering eyes do him any favors. No, it was clear why he hadn't sought treatment for his wound. He's a man on the run. Uh-oh. Still. Because someone's a thief, that means you leave them to die? I said it once, and I'll say it again. Some lives are worth saving. Others, not so much. Oh, boy. Going into Box. some gray area there. We're apothecaries, not gods. It ain't our place to judge. We have a duty to help anyone who needs us. Am I wrong? Show me one of your topics. Huh? Why should I do that? Call it curiosity. I want to see your skills for myself. Hmm. Huh. Well, if you insist. Here, looking's free. <laughs> hmm. It is unrefined, but adequate. Hey, with talent and confidence. Interesting assessment. I can see the passion in your eyes, so I'll not mince words. Let that man die. You can't... Before you act, ask yourself what it truly means to save a man's life. Especially life of a killer. Oh boy. I should go back and check up on Miguel. Hmm. And we've got more trouble, Benter. Hmm. His eyes are just like mine. I speak more truth than their tongues. What do you want, kitty? God dang it. <laughs> Silly cats. His heart is filled with pain. Oh. <laughs> I seem to be doing oh a lot in this episode. <laughs> And I don't think it's going to get any better because as far as I know, these, these, uh, tales are not going to get any more lighthearted. 
with maybe a few exceptions. <laughs> So, heads up! <laughs> anyway, now we need to go check up on Miguel and maybe get some actual honest answers out of this. Being something terrible. Whoa. Hi Dad. I'll take care of this. <laughs> Stings how you tell the sound right. working. I'll fix you up good as new. Uh -oh. Before you act. Ask yourself what it truly means to save a man's life. Especially the life of a killer. Hmm. Hmm. Huh? I mean, yeah, but... Shucks. Huh? <laughs> you were framed, huh? Yeah, I don't believe that for a second. Now listen here. Hi. Oh boy. This is gonna come back to bite me, isn't it? Yeah, this is definitely gonna come back to bite me. And so Alfin toiled until the wee hours of the night, tending to Miguel's wounds as best he could. Until finally, in the end... Uh... What? Where'd he go? Where the... Where the heck did he go? That's not good. Well, wounds have been healed such that he might go wandering. <laughs> oh. Okay. Alright, let's go see what's going on down here. What the? Uh. Oh, for bloody sakes! Someone, help! Got that? No, no! Uh. Really? Me. Um, no. Oh, heavens. 
Well, bastard. Time to go chop his head off. He's gonna say I told you so, isn't he? And there's the last travel banter. Tisk. You not be sorry in times like this we must help each other. Well, before we go into the woods, we're gonna Switch the party around and get Tressa and Ophelia back in the party. Oh boy. After all that, he turned out to be a brazen liar. Guess I should have seen that coming a mile away. Alright. Let's switch this around. And see what we can do. Uh, Alright, so Tressa's a decent way towards 5,000. Ophelia's a decent way. I've already got Alfin's final ability. So, I think we're in good shape. And we have a solid team composition. Things are going to get a little trickier once the secret jobs come into play. But that probably won't be for another few episodes. But we'll go ahead and save here. And we will probably go ahead and call that a video. So, next time we will make our way into the Rivera Woods to save little Timothy and chop that no good rotten bastard Miguel's head off. <laughs> or at the very least, take his own weapon and shove it where the sun don't shine. But if you like the video, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time as we venture into yet another pack of woods. But until that time, this is Alden Fudre, signing off. Farewell.